Hello, and welcome to our section called the phospholipid bilayer. You probably wonder what in the world that is. Um, let me explain a little bit. From our last section, we were talking about the prokaryotic cell. And if you'll remember, the prokaryotic cell has a plasma membrane or a cell membrane, uh, very much like a eukaryotic cell. So before we move on to eukaryotic cells, we're going to talk about this membrane, this cell membrane or plasma membrane. It's, it's um, an interchangeable term. This is a picture right here of a eukaryotic cell, obviously because it has many different organelles and it has a nucleus. But eukaryotic cells also have a cell membrane, and you can see that in the diagram. And that cell membrane is made up of what we call the phospholipid bilayer. And not only is the cell membrane made of that, but the membranes surrounding the different organelles within a eukaryotic cell also have this same um, constitution, phospho the phospholipid bilayer. And so we're going to look at that in depth in this section. And here is an artist's rendition of what the, a section of the membrane might look like. Um, and you don't need to memorize all of these uh, terms, but this is just to give you an overall view. If we look at the membrane and we look at this phospholipid bilayer here, it also has other elements in it. There are proteins involved. There are um, sugars and carbohydrates and other things going on. There's some cholesterol within the membrane itself. So it's, it has a lot going on within the membrane as well as this phospholipid bilayer. But let's take a look at just the phospholipid bilayer portion itself. So the, the bilayer consists of lipids. And in chemistry, we look at it like this, and this may look fo very foreign to you, but in essence, those little Cs are carbons, the Hs are hydrogens, and we have long chains of those. Those are called hydrocarbon chains, where they're all linked together. And there are two of these chains right here. We call them tails, really scientific term. And uh, up here, we call this the head of that phospholipid. Sometimes it's just shortened to, um, we just call it a lipid. Uh, but there's a phosphate group in there. That's why we get the term phospho. So there are two tails right here, and then there's a head. Now, the interesting thing, if you think about it this way, if you represent the head here as a sphere and the tails as little squiggly lines, these heads are what we call hydrophilic. The word phileo it is, means love. They love the water, hydro for water. The tails, on the other hand, are hydrophobic. You might think of words uh, phobia. They're afraid of the water or they don't like the water. So since there is water involved inside the cell and outside the cell, those tails hide away from that water. And they form this layer, the heads on the outside, because they love the water, so they're next to the water. And then the tails on the inside, where they don't like the water and they're away from the water. And it forms overall this bilayer. If we put that phospholipid bilayer back into the cell and think of it um, as part of the cell membrane here, we have here the hydrophilic heads and the hydrophobic tails in between. And this is uh, as though we were cutting out a cross section of the cell here, right here. We have water in here, water out here on the outside of the cell, and so we have those hydrophilic heads next to the water on the inside and the outside, and then the tails inside because they're hydrophobic. So why do we care about all of this? Um, the lipid bilayer, as I said before, it also surrounds the nuclei and the organelles inside of a eukaryotic cell. Um, it surrounds the cell inside of a, um, a prokaryotic cell, and it's very important for cell function because the feature of this bilayer makes it selectively permeable. What does that mean? It allows some molecules to pass through and it restricts others. 
So because of that bilayer and be because of the nature of um, the hydrophilic heads and the hydrophobic tails, um, it is able to be selective in what it allows to come into the cell and out of the cell. Some molecules cannot pass through that bilayer and others can. So um, that's why it's very important. It also forms the barrier between the inside of the cell and the outside of the cell. Uh, that If that bilayer were not there, we would not have, um, the cell would not have the ability to uh, have an inside and an outside. So that bilayer is very critical for that. Some terms that you need to know. Cell membrane, phospholipid, hydrophilic head, hydrophobic tails, the phospholipid bilayer, and what is selectively permeable. So those are just the basic terms that you need to know for this section. Uh, if you would like to look at advanced proficiency, the next slide has some ideas for you. Um, here are some more of those uh, ideas for advanced proficiency. One really good question, why are there proteins in the cell membrane? Uh, what is their function and what do they do? That's, that's an excellent uh, topic to study. Uh, what kinds of molecules are able to cross the lipid bilayer and which ones cannot? And there are more uh, reasons why. You can look into that further and understand understanding polarity and nonpolar and polar molecules. Uh, that would be a great research topic right there. And uh, hopefully some of you can find some of those answers and let me know in class. Thanks.